You probably don't think too much about bridges when building a city in city skylines. I'm here to ruin that for you by showing you a much better way to build bridges. One of the most common bridges you will build is an interchange bridge. These bridges can be built many ways. The first way to build an interchange bridge is to have a one span bridge crossing the freeway below. While this is possible to build, the likelihood is kind of low. I started on one side of the highway and went across 12 units which is the maximum span length in the game. At both ends I set the road to ground and brought it back to ground level. In vanilla, you will need to add terrain to the ends of the bridges and bring it down that way. Most bridges have a vertical curve to them to help with removing rainwater from the bridge, even if it is minuscule. I added a curve to this bridge by adding a node in the middle, using move it to delete the pier, and raise up the node a little, then using network multi-tool set slope function to make the nice looking curve. This is the one span bridge. A more common bridge is the two span bridge when crossing the highway. I started the bridge in the middle of the highway and built out evenly on both sides to make it easier to design as an engineer. I brought the road at both ends of the bridge to ground. I used move it to raise the center node up a little and used network multi tool to set slope to make this bridge have a nice vertical curve. I used no controller to make the nodes at the ends of the bridges slope to make it look nicer. This is the two span bridge. In my opinion, this one looks much nicer than the one span bridge. Another common bridge is the four span bridge when crossing the highway. I started this bridge similarly to the two span bridge. I made the initial span smaller so I can add additional piers. I then added another span on each end taking care to make these two spans the same length. You can make all spans different lengths to what you desire but making all spans the same length makes the bridge much easier to design as an engineer. I raised the middle node up a little and used the set slope mode to smooth out the curve. I also used no controller to fix the ends of the bridge. I'm a big fan of using this bridge or the two span bridge for highway interchanges. We can also apply these concepts to bridges crossing bodies of water. This bridge here needs to span 32 units. We have a multitude of options for this bridge. We could do two 10 unit spans and a 12 unit span, or in this example I did two 8 unit spans and two 9 unit spans. Once the bridge was placed I used move it to raise the center and used the set slope tool to make smooth vertical curve. Look how nice this bridge looks. We can also apply this method to much larger bridges. In this example I needed to cross 82 units over a body of water. I chose 7 10 unit spans and one 12 unit span to help me accomplish this. I applied the same method of raising the middle up a little and having a gentle slope. This time I changed it up a little by having a little road at the ends of the bridge and I chose a couple spans of the bridge to be a little steeper by using the set slope tool. Now look at this bridge. It has a little variance which makes it look really good. It's subtle but it adds so much. You don't have to bring the bridge to the ground at this point. In fact, I decided to change the end to a bridge section as I felt that made more sense for this type of location. You can also apply this strategy to any type of bridge in the game, including a suspension bridge. I built a suspension bridge here which ends up being a total of 5 spans crossing a much larger distance than what we have done in this video so far. I applied the same strategy by raising up the center pier a little and using the set slope function to make a nice smooth curve. Now take a look at the end results. This looks much better than a flat bridge. Let me know in the comments if you are going to apply this strategy to your own bridges or if you think my credentials as a bridge engineer in training is full of crap.